in many of my videos where I talk about data engineering skills, I will often reference SQL, databases, and other forms of skills that clearly involve interacting with data. That's because as well, data engineers or data analysts or data scientists, these are unavoidable. But as data engineers, we really are expected to kind of do a ton of other things. Probably stems a little bit from the fact that data engineers has a little bit of traction in the original kind of IT um, workflows that existed and still exist to this day that didn't only involve things like analytics, but also just in general operational data integration. So in this video, I wanted to talk about skills that data engineers need that have arguably nothing or very little to do with data. Understanding VPNs and proxies. That's where we're going to start. As a data engineer, you're going to run into cases where you have to interact with either VPNs or proxies. This could be because a database source that you need to pull information from exists behind a VPN because databases themselves should not be facing externally into the world. They should be behind um, some sort of firewall and should just be accessed generally by the application themselves. This means you often either need to have a machine that is directly connected to the network that the database lives on, or you need to be VPNed essentially into said network. And understanding how this works is important because that changes the infrastructure you're going to pick in order to pull that data out. For example, let's say you wanna go the low code route and you want to use 5CRAN. Well, if your database lives behind some sort of VPN, you're going to run into some problems if your 5CRAN instance is just purely on the cloud and exists externally outside of something like your virtual private cloud. Don't get me wrong, it does provide some ways that you can tunnel into some other machine that maybe provides some sort of uh, access to that VPN, but more than likely, especially with VPNs, you're going to have some problems here. And thus it is important to understand where everything lives in your system because it changes the tools that you interact with. Let me give you an example where I had to work with a casino that had multiple systems that were living on different uh, networks that were all protected both by a VPN and a firewall, meaning that I couldn't just directly access their systems to pull data. Due to regulations around casinos, I had to then deploy systems that were basically wrapped up in a Docker container on each of those locations, rather than being able to pull the information, I had to push the information. As you can see, this has kind of changed your system design. I would much rather have a central system that can pull all the information, but it is not ideal from a security and regulation state. Thus, I had to kind of change my system to be an individual system per machine. And that's personally why it's important to kind of understand the role that VPNs and proxies play in how you connect with systems. It is also important to understand the difference between VPNs and proxies and where you're going to use both. But for that, I will leave a link up here um, if you want to dig into more of that. Next is understanding SFTP and pretty good privacy encryption, or you might also know it as PGP. You could also be using GPG. The point is both of these might seem like older technologies that maybe you think no one uses. But honestly, even when I was working at Facebook, I occasionally had files coming in via SFTP. It is still a very common way to transact files and maybe something like Snowflake's ability to like send data uh, internally via the cloud system will remove it. But for now, uh, many companies still rely heavily on SFTP to send secure files of data between one another. This does kind of <laughs> involve data, but in a very different way in terms of it's just Generally, you take some sort of file, you'll often have some sort of select statement, pull that data, extract it, and then push it to some sort of SFTP, or maybe they'll pull it from yours, one of the two. And that's kind of why I wanted to bring up SFTP and PGP is because there's arguably a lot of different ways I've seen people set up how you actually get access to said data files. Sometimes it might be the case that the SFTP file is posted internally at the company that created the data, and then you you need to create some sort of script that pulls it from their SFTP. And in other cases, they might actually push it to your SFTP and you might just pull it internally. It changes how you're gonna interact with it. They might put a password on it. That's pretty straightforward. They might encrypt it uh, on their side. I've seen cases where there's like three keys involved because there's like one key um, involved in clarifying the fact that your key is the key that they were provided. Hopefully it's the simplest route, which is just generally there's a private and public key, but it's a great baseline skill to understand how files can get pushed and pulled. Uh, from different companies, as well as then how to handle encryption because you're often dealing with sensitive data. And again, there are still plenty of companies relying on this method to provide data or take data from their providers. Now let's talk about Docker and Kubernetes. If you were at one of my recent lives, someone asked about Kubernetes and I think both Kubernetes and Docker are both skills that are valuable as data engineers. 
depending on the company you work at, but more than likely you will have to have at least a baseline understanding of these solutions. Because again, when I worked at the casino, I had to spin up local Docker containers instead of being able to use some sort of centralized system like MWAA for my Airflow instance. That way I could deploy the same Airflow instance to multiple on-prem systems because this company had multiple physical locations. And if I didn't understand Docker, it would be very complex in order to do that all manually, right? Like to just kind of set up some sort of system. It would have been very hairy to make sure I had the same versions running everywhere. So it was just much smoother. And the same thing goes with Kubernetes because you'll often sometimes find that you need to be the DevOps person, especially if you don't have infrastructure support for your data team. So you might get stuck deploying a ton of different solutions. And yes, you could kind of try to manage this through some sort of haphazard Docker container mess, but it would be nice if you had them all in their own little pods. So do spend some time learning a little bit about Docker and Kubernetes, at least how to kill a pod when it's not acting correctly and then restart it just so you save a little bit of headspace. Another skill I'm constantly having to deal with is IAM or identity access management, especially when it has to deal with either who accesses my data and how I should set up groups and policies um, and different roles, especially on things like Snowflake, as well as even things inside of the cloud. As much as in all hopes, there's someone at your company that will do this. If you're just at a startup or if you've somehow been put in charge of all of the data infrastructure, you're likely gonna have to do a lot of IAM. I know it's not the most thrilling work to do, but especially with things like increased concern about data privacy, GDPR, and just layers upon layers of people wanting to make sure that only the right people access data, you will need to spend a lot of your time just making sure that people accessing data are the right people or the people accessing systems that access that data. So that's another skill that maybe I didn't want to know that I've had to learn over the last decade. Again, most of these skills, I don't think I knew coming out of school. It's just stuff that you figure out along the way because in order to put code into production or in order to work or create systems in more complex systems, you will unavoidably have to learn all of this. Before you go, I'd love to hear a little bit from you about the skills you've picked up over the last few years, whether you're a data engineer or a data analyst. Go ahead and post them below in the comments and I will love to respond. Thanks so much for watching this video and I will see you next time. Goodbye.